welcome to part five of the LHTS 2000 Turbo Plus build. Few things we're doing next. We're still questing for power with the ideal cat. So we've got one of the super expensive GSI cats from Tycon. It's their 550 to 800 horsepower cat. Also, you might wonder why we have no front bumper and gas cap. Well, we did purchase a CR front bumper, CR front lip, CR trunk, and CR wing just to give it a little bit more of an OEM Plus look. We're just looking for a little bit nicer cosmetic look. So let's get going on this. We'll show you what we're doing next. So I just got a call from Austin that he can do the intercooler black. If you guys wondered why I removed the gas cap, it was to do a color match. I ordered the trunk from Honda, same thing. It not only has the pre-drilled holes, it is actually braced for the wing. There is a few wings left, only an apex blue. So that's what color this wing was. If you're interested, I have one CR front lip. Even without the grill on, you can barely see that thing. If I can get it out where the light catches it. Make sure you leave as much of this plastic on as you can. Uh, this all snaps back into place. But this is designed to channel the air through into the condenser and radiator. If you leave this off, the air pretty much goes uh, in and down. Well, air will always take the uh, easiest path, so you want to make sure you channel it. This lines up with your bumper nicely. One of the last things I might do is change that little hose from there going into the air box. Not sure yet. Still got to put our radiator and fan combo. Another reason I wanted to buy a new bumper is our bumper has the VIN number on it. That way, if I want to put this car back to stock and sell the car, I can sell the parts off it. We buy a lot of Tycon. We're very fortunate that they sponsored this build. I just want to show you a little bit of what we have here. This is for our exhaust. So real quick, the boost valve, which is one of our favorite parts, it's boost open. They also offer this boost close in two and a half inch, three inch, three and a half and four titanium. So it's going to weld to any of your titanium parts you get from Tycon. Something else that's really important. If you're building a stainless part, titanium part, you want to mix and match. Nice thing is, is their flanges are designed to work together. This is a stainless V-bend and then they have the titanium V-bend. And they're a male and a female, so you can make sure that you put these the right way around so they fit together. That way you can go from titanium to stainless. They have O2 bungs in titanium, O2 bungs in stainless, and these are the ones that are designed to fit around your round pipe. They're already shaved. Of course, they have all the bends and mufflers that you see in our builds. Segment bends right here. They offer a million different styles. This is one of our tubes that we built for the S2000 airbox, and it has all the different sizes they need to build any bend that you want. Hey, Pat the Stripe Guy, John at LHT. Pretty good. Wondering if you could match some vinyl for me. One of my LHT logos you did in silver. I've got a weird looking bronze wheel. This is the Fat Cat. Somebody asked what brand did it. It's it's that brand. Brand new and it's got an O2 sensor welded in the back. If for some reason you want this, I'll sell you it because I need the flanges. We're going to do more testing. This is the ultra high output flow, whatever it is. And this is the regular. The front bumper, the way the H is attached, it has some little backing clips that we're missing. We have the H, but not the clips. If you've never painted a bumper before, one thing to note. Make sure you black out these pieces right here because they show under the headlight if that is still bright red. When you look through the headlight, you see that showing. It looks a little odd. One thing to note when you do the CR wing, it's going to be a little heavier. So Honda actually offer these. These are a heavier spring to put in your trunk. You can replace the fresh ones, put these in. This is the part number for each one. They are a different part number. Go ahead and write that down. There is one of each, and this is to make sure that the trunk doesn't slam every time you uh, open it. And it's the factory one for the CR. So this one we've used many times, and we are actually going to change the CRX to one of these. When we rebuild the engine on the CRX, we're going to use one of these in two and a half. In fact, my truck has two of these on it in two and a half. So this is the regular one that's like 203 bucks. So I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison against this one. This one is three times the price of that. This one over here on their site, they claim this one is 500 to 800 horsepower, where this one's 350 to 500. This is a four inch body. This one's a four and a half. So as you see on this one right here, we have 
an EPA number. Another thing to note, it's slightly larger. It's a four inch body to a four and a half. It looks way bigger than half an inch bigger. So one of the reasons I want to do this is not just for our car and to share our testing. It's that I want to have something to offer for our customers. The dual cast system was a good idea, but you're buying two cats, so you got $400 in cats, uh, four 90 degree bends, and then labor to build it. So two pounds, 11 on this one. And again, it, not that it makes that big a difference. I'm just amazed how much heavier this is just by feeling it. Uh, this is three pounds, eight. Cut the flanges off the fat cat and we're gonna reuse those. This will be the third time we've used them. These are good quality parts, so you can reuse them. That's another way to know. So a little bit of scrap tubing that we've already used. We're gonna put the cat in the same position, put a no two center on each side. Uh, some new Stainless Brothers stainless pipe right here. Fantastic material. So let's cut that, we'll put that into place. Put a V-band on each end. One thing to show you right here, this is the chill block that Tycon offers. A third party item, but fantastic. Stops you warping the flanges and keeps the flanges true and welds nicer. They also offer it for their O2 bung, which same thing, stops it warping, stops you damaging the threads, makes it much easier to weld. Let's let this thing cool, get this thing put on, and she's ready to go. We can do some testing on this. Hopefully it makes the same power as the best one in the bunch. So that's the results if you didn't see that episode. So 407 was essentially test pipe, 394 was the dual cast system, and 388 was the big fat cat. So not a whole lot of difference, but of course, 20 horsepower is a restriction. We're trying to make the motor efficient without cranking up the boost to compensate. That's why we're looking for the perfect cat. We want the cat to be efficient, we want it to work, but we don't want it to raw horsepower. If you remember, I mentioned using one of their three inch cats, their GSI cats, it's like 220 bucks. A single three was robbing about 30 horsepower. And I think it's just because it's a small body. So the fact that this straight through, we call it a test pipe, but it's a resonated test pipe. The fact that this only took about 10 horsepower is actually pretty good. It's pretty efficient. But the fact that the amount of fabrication to fit this, and of course it's tight to get it in there. Uh, this thing cost me like 140 bucks. Well, it's a diesel cat and it did work, but of course it's kind of big. It's tough to get in there. As you see, we angled it up to get ground clearance, which means this part of the body was close to the under body of the car, which would transfer heat. And there wasn't enough room for a heat shield. So this isn't really a viable option either, even though it's cheaper and it will fit. We're trying to make it cost effective and fit and look right. And neither one of these will fit that bill. This is the most expensive cat we have ever installed. I think the retail on this is $791. But you know what? If it works, it's worth every penny and it's something that we can offer to our customers. So we're going to test this. We're going to see exactly what kind of power it makes and how a pressure gauge came in. So what we can actually do is screw a pressure gauge in here and here. If there's going to be restriction, it should be on this side. There should be zero restriction here, but it'd be kind of nice to get some data from it. And then we'll know if there is a restriction in here. Also look at the power and we'll know by the power if it's actually holding back. Let's get another cold start sound clip. I'm not expecting it to really change that much. Cats would always make it a little quieter than a test pipe. That's pretty mellow still. So another reason I always recommend a cat is it acts like a muffler itself, which is always a good thing. So some of you, uh, some of you guys have said, hey, what is your obsession with being quiet? What's the deal? Well, I've been doing this a long time. Not only am I more picky and I don't want the noise for myself, I don't want to give the whole car community a bad name. Now that sounds silly, but when you're a non-car person and a car goes by and makes a whole bunch of racket, well, that doesn't really make you excited. It makes you uh, uh, get annoyed, and it annoys your neighbors, that kind of thing. Very cool. Part number for the front H. I'm a big fan of using the OE parts wherever possible. And depends on the car. Sometimes I like emblems, and sometimes I don't. There's a few videos in, uh, in our playlist if you watch. Uh, it's uh, amazing how passionate some people get. They hated that I took the badging off the NSX. Well, I just didn't like it. It was huge. 
if the NSX was uh, about this size, I think I'd have probably left it. And if it had an H, I'd have almost certainly left it. But the fact that that NSX had an Acura badge about the size of a dinner plate. Now this bumper has been painted and obviously wet sanded and buffed. Uh, it doesn't have any ceramic on it. Not sure if in the future that is going to happen or not. There we go. We'll push this down and then I'll attach it from the backside. But this car really could use a good buff and polish and maybe some ceramic. This is the part number for the back H. So obviously it has a different shape. This is almost flat. Well, the bumper has a curve to it. So that is gonna go on there. It comes with double-sided as well as the clips. You can see there, when it's all the way through the trunk, it's where it actually attaches. You can see there is three points there that the wing attaches to. And that's that thicker brace and that's actually welded to the trunk. That's another reason that you should get the CR one. All right, back on the dyno. Just to let you know, I'm leaving the airbox closed. I don't want to do any more airbox testing. I'm happy with this. It didn't pick up any more power uh, with the lid off. So that means our second hole is working right there. And it has the inlet right there. So let's get up to temperature. Let's do some pulls. do another test I want to hook up this right here this should tell us if there's any pressure between the turbo and the cat let us know if the cat is flowing um, trying to stay positive here uh, I won't be honest I'm so close to pulling out the four inch uh, hole saw and putting a big hole in the hood and stick a pipe out of it and go hey guys look I'm making all kinds of power and just you know if you can't beat them join them uh, let's stick this in there and see what it does. This is the downpipe, this is the flex, this is the factory O2 sensor, this is our cat, this is the second O2, this is our wide band. I want to take our factory O2 out and put the sensor there so it's going to measure any pressure between the cat and the turbo. That is going to tell us also if there is a flow restriction here because if it's not flowing enough it'll show you pressure in here. So that's as long as a hose as it comes with which is uh, terrific. So I guess uh, you're going to see it before I do. Well you're going to see it in uh, the same time as I talk about it because I'm going to edit it. I'm going to dangle this over here and set the tripod up and film that and do the old school data logging. Basically film it then review the footage and uh, we'll see what we get uh, according to this. Green is good, uh, red is bad. I guess I should do this so it doesn't move during uh, the pull. This is fourth gear pull. So yeah, it's looks like he's got four pounds of pressure there. We're down to 375, so that's taking a solid 25 horsepower and about 30 foot pounds. Uh, the torque is pretty flat, but it's down pretty much everywhere. All right, so reviewing the data on this one, it did notice the boost actually dropped a little bit too. That's one of the reasons the torque has dropped. Uh, torque is usually related to the boost pressure and it dropped about 1.3 pounds on this run. So back to the best flowing option out of the four, let's just do a back-to-back -back test just to kind of verify it. See what we get, just so I can back up those numbers. All right, so I'm getting about one and a half. It's actually less than that because I didn't calibrate the gauge. It tells you to 
calibrate it and put it to zero, there's an adjustment screw on the back. As you see, it's starting a little over zero. So that's got about one pound of pressure right there as opposed to four or five. Okay, so the final results, if I compensate it by increasing the boost pressure with the cat to get it even without the cat, they're not too far off. It's still dropping power. It's not a ton. Obviously, it's mainly up top, but that's trying to match the boost. The boost is almost identical on those runs. So it's still taking a little bit of power. So I know it's all in the name of testing, but you guys are not really interested in this uh, testing. I'm getting 5,000 views on these. Uh, so there's only basically 5,000 people tuning in to watch this. So you guys are absolutely not interested in any more S2000 testing. So. I'll go ahead and hang this one up for a little while, push this aside, and I'll bring some more content, something other than S2000s, because I think I've about played out with these, and you guys are uh, tired of seeing them. So uh, whenever we get some more content, we'll see you on the next video.